because uh, we are almost rounding off uh, just uh, fi about five minutes uh, left uh, to the end of today's uh, very constructive and educative uh, program on the Pan-African Television. And uh, we we'll want to have a concluding statement from you, uh, uh, dear India letter, if, if you're still there. Uh, uh, we are actually uh, rounding off with the program and looking at uh, the way forward. You know, Africa is very instrumental and pivotal when it comes to the global transformation, when it comes to changes occurring, and we are conversant of uh, the fact. So uh, what do you have to say as uh, maybe a tech-home package here yeah, as far as uh, uh, empowering Africa is concerned, especially touching on uh, the uh, population which I think you've been very intentional about looking at that population uh, that has been sidelined and how can they bring them in to ensure that they move together towards uh, the same uh, trajectory uh, that will empower every citizen and ensure sustainable development across. Okay, thank you very much Clarissa. Uh, I would say that it starts from me, it starts from you, it starts from us um, as a people, as ordinary persons, as ordinary Africans, if we stand in solidarity of our uh, of our continent, and if we are accountable of uh, everything that that is around us, it is easy for us to build us to build this uh, um, civil groups that are able to be powerful and be able to speak out the voice of all of us it is my dream it is my desire or oh, i will say today as i come and say i wish that africa is reborn and is reunited is and doesn't look at a sister from a distance when i see you clarissa i should see africa when i see my dear sister from kenya i should see myself when i see dr eddie i should see myself when i see paseka i should see myself when we come to this uh, and become united, it is difficult from external forces to come and destroy us. And it is also uh, strategic in that, that when we are holding and we are all one powerful power, we stand and we can be able to take our role in, co in global transformation. So in everything, I'll just conclude by saying, um, Let's hold our hands together. Let's see one day this dream will come to pass. And definitely we need each other. The, the West needs us. And we as Africa, we need each other. We can, nobody can stand as a, as, as a uh, how do you say it in English? As a, as a single body, you can't do it alone. We all need each other. So let's hold our hands together and let's build Africa and let's build the world. Thank you standing together as a continent uh, for the greater benefit of all Africans. We are rounding off with you, uh, Lucy, uh, looking out about uh, uh, Africa's uh, uh, rebirth, Africa's uh, uh, unity and everything, every aspect. And of course, uh, we cannot uh, sideline the aspect of globalization or international cooperation, but we need to go to the table, uh, being able uh, to present a package that can actually uh, seduce, let me use the word, uh, the other parts and of course listen that this is Africa talking and we can only do this by having uh, uh, what we call a common mindset so let's uh, run off with you with this aspect of what uh, practical mindset can the African uh, stakeholders adopt as far as this aspect of globalization or international cooperation is involved in present uh, the society that will uh, go a long way to ensure uh, this empowerment of especially the African uh, human capital, that is the young people in Africa, that can solve the problem of uh, migration and other issues affecting uh, the young Africans. Thank you so much, Clarice. And that is such a powerful question to actually conclude this conversation today. And I want to say that we are already there. We do have a common, a common aspect of it or a common approach as you're calling it. Uh, and that is the Pan-African ideology. It is already there. It is not, it is not, uh, 
it is not a vacuum. We have actually practically see it benefit the continent before. We're talking about the continent that actually single-handedly fought for its independence against colonialism, a system that had been forcefully embedded on them. So th these are not false things that we're talking about. These are practical things that we're talking about. All we need to do is go back to the Pan-African ideology from a very practical perspective of it and actually implement what it says. Because what we have as Africa at the moment is a lot of talks, a lot of talks, a lot of evaluation of the potential of Africa, but never the actual action of it. So the actual action and embracing the Pan-African ideology, it is there. And the Pan-African ideology should be there within the education system, our economic system, our political system. Let this be the harmonizing ideology that guides Africans. Secondly, as I had, I have, as I have portrayed throughout this conversation, is intra-African uh, transformation, and this is for the longest time we have we have enclosed ourselves as and working as silos as African countries. And I think it's it's about time we come together as an African continent. Uh, being a lot of borders have, have hindered, hindered us before. So I think it's actually time we try going borderless and see the benefits that can come from that. So I think if we're talking about a lot of peace and stability, we're talking about missions, uh, peace missions, let these missions come from our own African states and not um, impose missions on us that actually have other agendas. And through that, we can, act, uh, we can attain peace and stability, which is the main prerequisite to all other forms of uh, transformations we are talking about, such as free movement of people, free movements of goods and services. And I think the African Free Trade Agreement is a good full, uh, footprint, blueprint, sorry, that we can actually follow. So that's why I'm saying we're still on the right track. And I think with that, uh, if we go through that, we, we can uh, guide by the Pan-African ideology, we can achieve that common agenda of transforming Africa. And then the other one is leadership, which is very important. And I think we need to have governance systems and structures and leadership structures and system that actually represent the priorities of the citizens through real representation and their practicability. And then finally, harmonization of our agendas. We need to have a common voice. It has worked before. This is an international relations, a tactic that has been tested before. If 55 states within the continent come together and say this is our stand on this particular issue, I think we can easily influence, take a position, and set the agenda on the global arena. Thank you so much. Peter, if Africa can stand as, uh, as one, it will be very easy to uh, define uh, uh, its own uh, perspective and, of course, uh, uh, let it hurt across the global world. Like uh, Violetta said, it is difficult uh, to act alone, but then uh, when uh, engaging with other uh, global powers, it's always good to go intentional about uh, 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 capitalizing on the advantages of all of these in uh, cooperation, international cooperation of globalization for the benefit of the African people, its African unity, its African development. Let us go together with uh, the African uh, perspective. I want to immensely uh, thank you, Dr. Eddie Eric, uh, Mr. Pasek, uh, uh, Faromele, uh, in Violeta Makuver, and of course, uh, Lucy, uh, Nchiri for the great insight on our topic this day, which I think was largely uh, constructive. And uh, of course, uh, it's not just talking like some people always say. These debates have gone a long way to influence change across Africa. And you can attest from the changes occurring, uh, especially at the political level. And of course, uh, Africa will stand as a sovereign nation to defend, of course, the ideologies and the principles, the agendas that will bring together the continent and will forever be grateful and not always stay in regret. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate all your time. And for the uh, to the technical crew, I want to appreciate you uh, for ensuring uh, that it was uh, a good uh, uh, debate so far with uh, 
great uh, uh, collaboration from your end. Thank you so much. And to those of you who followed live, keep trusting the Pan-African Television. We are here to give you uh, information that will go a long way to bring practical change and make Africa great again. Thank you. And see you subsequently.